What's going on, Charles Bodenston? So we're gonna go over, I know I've been asked so many times, what books do you read? What do you, like, what, what's going through your mind? And because I don't make book reviews, so this is, before I actually get into the list, the reason that I actually don't make book reviews anymore is because people expect me to talk about the actual book, and if I miss a point, they're like, well, you didn't bring up this one important point about the book. And a lot of the time, I just say, you know what, this is a great book to read, and if I like it, that doesn't mean you should like it. However, I did compile a list of 12 things that you guys should be piling into, this year, I guess, 12, one, one, a, one a month, I should say. So I actually have two book reviews, ironically enough, after saying I don't do book reviews. Here are two that I recommend, The One Thing and Elon Musk. Those are two people that I just absolutely adore. Uh, Gary Keller, obviously, for the business sense of building a, a huge real estate conglomerate, and then Elon Musk, who's just an absolute beast, and I don't even feel like he's from planet Earth. Okay, so, the first book, and by the way, this is in no particular order. The first book is Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. This is a very short read. This is only about 220 pages, large font, and you just, you'll breeze through in a weekend. However, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway essentially just goes over fear. You know, a lot of people say, how do I overcome fear? How do I get motivated? What's my purpose? What's my cause? What's the meaning of life? The thing is, a lot of people, the reason that they don't seek it or want to seek it or do certain things like, say, start their own business is because they have fear. I do too. I did. I still do. I will. <laughs> it's like it's not going to go away. That, that's one of the biggest things is that we feel that once we get to a certain certain level, once we've arrived, that fear is going to go away. Once we once we become captain of the team, it's, the pressure is off. Or once we win a championship, once I start my own business, once I become a millionaire, once I get married, once I get a kid, once I, you know, it's like no, no, no. That's when the pressure starts. That's when the fear starts because now you have to maintain it and strive for more. So feel the fear in it. Feel the fear and do it anyway. It boils down to one thing, which is. I'm not gonna be able to handle it. So you have to come up with the affirmation that is, I, I will handle this, I can handle this. Someone says, you're about to go public speak in front of 500 people, or 100 people, or five people, or your classroom, or whatever. You get nervous, you get, like right now, you get that, that bodily feeling, you feel that that is your emotions. However, it is not. Go check it out, that was the first book I read when I was 21, and that started me on the self-development path. Number two is Relentless. I actually, I have it downstairs, I'm at my office right now, and Relentless is essentially a no bullshit guide to shut your mouth and just produce. So there's three types of people, I'm not gonna go over it, but essentially he talks about Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley and all these guys that they, they, they have this inner demon that, that comes out, this inner shadow that, that needs to come out. They're not motivated by the crowd or money or any of these external things, the celebrity, the endorsements. They're motivated inside. They, they win a championship, they want another one. They self-motivate, it comes from within. And it's kind of one of those things that when you see someone just performing on an elite level, say at the Super Bowl or the World Series, or in you're watching someone just absolutely crush it, they're in that zone or as Nihai Shalmetrify, he calls it, I forget, I don't even know how to say his, his full name, but he has a book called Flow. You're in flow where it's not too easy and it's not too difficult, you're just zoned in, kind of like I am with this camera, you're just zoned in. And it's an amazing read, it will, it's not for the faint of heart, it's not for the, the people that are like, well, I don't know, no, no, no. You, you either step up or you, you gotta go pro, as Steven Pressfield says. Great book as well, going pro. Highly recommend that as well. So Eckhart Tolle has two books. Uh, depends which one you wanna start with. Obviously one is more about being present, it's called The Power of Now, and then the other one is A uh, Beautiful New World or A Brave New World or something like that. I highly recommend that one, obviously, even though I forgot the actual title. but. The reason I bring up Eckhart Tolle in, in, at all is because both not only are both books good, but both books need to be said, especially in this hyper-paced cell phone kind of world where you're just, give me, give me stimulation, give me a reality TV, give me news, give me social media, give me the internet, government, uh, drama, give me, give me something to talk about. And what Eckhart Tolle says, forget about the past because that's in the past. Forget about the future because that hasn't even arrived yet. You don't even know if it's gonna happen. You focus on right now. Highly recommend that. Number whatever, four, one, two, three, four, go for no. This is a book that, to be honest, it's one of those books, it's a fiction story, 125, 130 pages, and it's amazing. It's, it, go for no is, it's, it's about failing. And there's a stigma about failing, is that we need perfection. We, the, the world should be perfect. And number one, it's never gonna be ever, at any time. There's never gonna be, and the reason being is like uh, poverty or water or cleanliness or greenhouse gas or 
anything, anything or crime or terrorism or whatever. It's like it's never going to be perfect. Number one is that because humans aren't perfect. No one on this planet is perfect, regardless of what you think. Nothing you're going to produce, no company, no product, no service, no homework assignment, no speech is just going to be perfect because the person giving it is, is going to say, say they gave an amazing speech or a perfect, you know, like maybe there's one time someone went out there and, and had a perfect performance as a gymnast or an ice skater. But the next time they go out, they're not going to be perfect. That's the thing is that it changes. So you have to go for no. You have to fail big, you have to fail fast, and you have to fail often. Those are three of the parts of go for no. This is massive, this next book. Uh, Eat That Frog. Brian Tracy in general has written probably 35 to 40, 45 books. Brian Tracy, he's one of the, the old school, kind of Les Browns, the, the Jim Rohns, the guys that, that you know, they, they were the guys that started the motivation, self-development arena that Tony Robbins and all these other guys are, are Grant Cardone, that are living through right now. So Eat That Frog essentially just says, in the morning, you go out and you do the hardest thing first, which actually goes into the one thing, by Gary Keller. So read Eat That Frog, very short, also fiction, 125 pages, and then the one thing, read along with that. So the one thing says, and I have a book review as well on that, so you search through the channel and I, I go more in depth, but the one thing is, there's only one thing that you need to do to get what you want. So if you're overweight and your one thing in life is to lose weight or you're an athlete and you, you just wanna win a championship, there's one thing that you need to do to get better. And, and the thing is, that one thing is what you avoid. So if you're in sales, you avoid sales calls. If you're a teacher, it's maybe producing new content because you're nervous that you're not gonna be able to actually teach it as well because you're used to old content, you're used to old teaching, you're used to just going with the textbook instead of going with the flow. Moving on, Think and Grow Rich. Obviously this is a classic, you know, everyone's already, already brought it up, I'm not gonna you know, talk about it too much, but essentially your mind is everything. The reason you don't have anything, or the reason you don't have the thing in your life that you wanna have, a relationship, the body you want, the money, whatever, whatever championship, a, a, a good public speaking, or a big company, or a social media following, or whatever you want, is because you, have not wrapped around your head that you're worthy, that you deserve it, that you have a vision and you're actually moving towards it. And not only is it about money, but it's also that everything in our mind, everything about money is our mind. How did you grow up? What did your parents say about money? Did they say it was abundant? Was there not a lot? Did they say save? Did they say spend? Because you literally are getting, you're a blank slate when you're born and just money ideas just come and they're downloaded into your mind and then you, you think that that's right, that, that that's it. You hate the 1% or you're part of the 1%, you hate the poor or you're in the middle class and you can't see yourself moving up or you're, whatever the case is, you have things revolving around money. So read, think, and grow rich.